Greetings, everyone. Truth will rise. Back at you. So, as everyone knows, uh, at the University of Missouri, the football team basically, well, not basically, they did. They pretty much said, you know what? Because of the, the blatant racist things that have happened um, to melanated persons on this campus, until the president is gone, we won't play football. We will not play another game. And um, I think Tim Wolf was the, was the president of uh, the University of Missouri, and he did recently resign. And I, when I first heard about it, I said I thought it, I thought it was great. First of all, in this day and age, you know, it's so rare when athletes, particularly um, black athletes, take a real stand on anything that that directly involves us. You know, I'm not talking about um, the NBA um, with their Lean In campaign, which my thought on that is. To all those brothers, when we we need we don't when we stop getting shot down, then I worry about leaning in. But that's another story for another time. Um, and no one has a problem of about that. You know, for all of the the, the brothers in the league that I saw on those commercials, um, and and sisters as well. Um, they had some sisters that, uh, from the the WNBA um, in those those ads as well. And you didn't hear any any anyone complain about that or say you know the the typical things that they say when uh, black athletes are more concerned uh, with real issues more than scoring baskets or, or uh, scoring touchdowns. It, it, it's a problem. So when these brothers started speaking truth to power on some real issues, you you caught this not only um, from people of the I'll say the dominant society but of course you have your your buck dancers out there you know that say well, why are they concerned about that I mean you know the, the, the tip they've got it pretty good I mean the school because I, I heard this on radio if call after call after call I mean hell they're getting a free education at a prestigious university you know for free and you know they they shouldn't be worried about stuff like that you know they're there to play football you know there's a lot of people who would kill to get that opportunity and they're just pissing it away you you, you know you you heard that so very much and it was so disgusting to hear that and for anybody who says that we're in a post-racial society i wish you'd run really hard into a sharp object because you're an idiot you know Whenever you know you speak about these other issues, there's no problems. Whether we can go back, <clears throat> back in the day, whether it was uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, formerly Chris Jackson for for you SEC basketball fans out there, or or Craig Hodges uh, taking a stand on issues, and and the, and Craig Hodges being all but blackballed out of the NBA, you know I can go. Well, I can't go on and on. You know. The, the, they don't take a stand because they're afraid and then when you do you know you try to get you you get this this I don't even want to say backlash but this thought like they should just be happy where they are they've got it pretty good what do they have to be complaining about which is, is a it's, it's almost a deflectionary attack it, it goes back to that that the uppity Negro syndrome that you see back in the day you know, I mean, how dare you? I mean, look at you. Look what you got. What do you have to complain about? That sort of thing. Um, and I applaud them. But, but, let us be clear. And let us not forget that the only reason that this happened was not the boycott in and of itself. You know, um, it was because it was going to affect the University of Missouri's money. It was going to affect because they have they were going to one have to pay BYU a million dollars um, to play in that game at Arrowhead. Then it was the stadium room. Then the game was on TV. ESPN would lose money. The SEC would lose money, um, and all these other entities, the NCAA. When these brothers decided they weren't going to play, 
And by the way, I want to say shout outs to Gary Pinkle and the rest of the, the football program for doing what was right and standing with these brothers. Um, but when when that when when the, the cash registers looked like it weren't going to to ching for a Saturday, that's when things happen. And I want us to understand as a, as a community, and I want to tie it to. Um, I've seen a lot of of um, of not um, losing, not uh, participating in Christmas, which I don't have a problem with. But I want us to to make sure one that. Maybe it shouldn't be a one-day thing. It should be a, a constant thing that, or even if we're going to, let's spend our money within the community. And it goes to show that the black dollar and how much we generate, and particularly how much the, these brothers and sisters who are athletes, how much they generate for these colleges, these television stations, these, the, uh, uh, these, these networks, these athletic commissions, these conferences is astronomical. And when you decide to put the helmet down, to take the sneakers off, and really stand up for something, um, and that gets in the way of their money. Because understand this, okay? And this is really bad to say that you as an athlete, you are looked at as a commodity. And, and if you don't believe me, look at the words that they, are, that they use to describe you. They don't say, and you, you hear this from fans and all this. Think about it. <clears throat> the team's not looking good. Well, look at the product that they're putting on the floor. A product. Okay, there's a Walgreens across the street from me. You know what's on the shelf or on the racks? Products, things that I buy, things that I own. People are not products. They refer, or, or and you hear this more in the professional rank. Someone signs a contract that maybe it's not a lot of money. You, Oh, well, they bought him for a good price. They got him for a good price. You know, as if he's a car that you that you haggled down and you got a good deal on. You know, you, you listen to how they're, they're referred to them. And, oh, they need to cut them. They need to buy this person. Look at this. You know, even I'm even having a problem with these shirts now. It'll say uh, property of such and such, such and such. You know, it 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 really is. Um, you, you listen to it, it is akin in a lot of ways to terminology used during slavery. And if you want to get into how the, the draft is and, and how these guys, you know, how they're poked, prodded, and measured, and, and all of these things, and, 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 and it's akin to the auctioneer getting up there and talking about how many bales of hay that this strong, big buck of a nigger can, can hoist, and children, he can sire and look at how this... This black African woman and her child bearing hips, it's, it's a lot of ways, it's very similar. Of course, these guys are getting paid. And the moment they step out of line and say something wrong, Marshawn Lynch, Craig Hodges, um, then they, they try to institute punishments against you. But as, as, as great as this, this was, I hope that this will, one, you know, show not only uh, black athletes, the, the tremendous amount of power that you really wield because this was just one game. The threat of, of sitting out for one game. But black people as a whole to how if we, once we get together, we band together and get on a single accord um, from an economic standpoint, we can really make some things happen because at the end of the day, uh, money, the bottom line is what really matters. And that was, that was why um, Tim Wolf is no longer the president of, of uh, the University of Missouri. So, you know, let's let's take this and not look at it as the finish line in in you know in our struggle. But this is just a step in the right direction, and hopefully, we can use this as a learning tool to look at how we can get things done in the future. To let to to see that that a group of melanated people can get together decide on a course of action and make some things happen. So I hope we can look at this as an example and as a case study of how we want to go about things uh, moving forth and really getting some things done. But I'm looking at the clock here. I have rambled on for 9 minutes and 40 seconds. 41. 42. And I appreciate the three of you or four of you who stayed with me to the end of this rant. 
um, and just let me get this out. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone watching. But what are your thoughts on this uh, situation at the University of Missouri? Um, of, of, or, you know, the, the protest in general? Um, what do you think um, of, of black people coming together and, and uh, getting a tangible result this time? Is this something that we can build on and implement again in the future? Should, when, let me not say should, when the time necessitates it again. Um, but let me know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. We can have a, uh, a productive discourse on this uh, subject. But I want to thank again all three or four of you for watching the video. Um, just stay, stay positive, stay powerful, stay healthy. Peace.